Hello again, everyone. Mark Hackle, Macomb County Executive. John Paul Rea, our Deputy Executive here. Uh, just giving the updates once again on what's going on with the coronavirus here in Macomb County. Um, where are we at with the updated numbers, John? Mark, after another weekend here in Macomb County, we're just over 4,400 cases and nearly at 400 deaths here in the county. Statewide figures have jumped uh, over 31,000 cases statewide and nearly 2,400 deaths. So again, steady climb still, but we're starting to see a little bit of plateau on the figures, trying to do a little bit more analytics, not only by case origin, also putting more information specifically on our dashboard, not only with deaths by community, Community, but again, knowing the number of cases, the onset of the symptoms, and how that's all working with tracking the virus. Again, MacombGov.org is where you're going to get your information. Uh, we, we lay it out in a different format, I think, than most, but one that I think people are recognizing as being something that's very helpful to them and really understanding what's going on here in Macomb County. With that being said, I think the biggest concern people are having is tracking the numbers. So the question is, you know, the number of cases, the number of deaths, you know, uh, what about those that aren't getting tested, you know, or those that may have had it already that didn't get tested. So the big issue and a big concern we see around the country, uh, probably around the globe, but even locally right now is how do we track the numbers? How do we get a good handle on it to make a determination when we start moving or progressing towards some sense of normalcy? And uh, again, that's going to be some time out. I don't foresee this opening back up, uh, you know, this summer or even this fall. Um, and if it does, it's going to be in a progression, kind of that phased approach we talked about uh, that they kind of led at the federal government level and are allowing states to kind of uh, make that determination themselves. But Tracking the numbers is going to be hard because it's all about testing, and that seems to be somewhat of a confusion for a lot of people right now. Mark, there's a number of sites throughout the county, you know, whether we see the uh, existing general hospitals and the testing capabilities that they have, the interactions you can have with your own physician to track your symptoms and understand is it COVID or something else. Obviously, a lot of news this weekend with new sites opening up around the county, whether it's some of the local health care uh, uh, outposts or even some of the pharmacies that are around here. So that's going to be an evolving conversation, and a lot of misinformation and mixed messages out there about how you access it. But again, come to MacombGov.org. You can get that information and we'll be disseminating where's the best and most appropriate places to go get tested if that's where you're at. And I think if there's any, uh, I guess, uh, people, you know, they get upset about this, you know, fault, I guess, if you want to look at that, is there was really no coordinated effort, whether it's at the federal level or state level, uh, to try to make a determination, how do we best handle the testing? And uh, that's where the confusion comes into play with a lot of people saying, what are they doing in Detroit? What's happening in Oakland County? And how come Macomb County isn't doing this? And there doesn't seem to be this kind of united front as to how we're uh, addressing this. But suffice it to say, there's no question about it, when it comes to the testing sites, uh, there are a lot of people that are stepping up to try to figure out how do they provide available testing for people. And there doesn't seem to be that pent up demand for you know people to say, I can't get in, I can't find some location. It's there, it's available, uh, whether it's the sites in Detroit or you know here in Macomb County. Um, what I mean by that is John Paul, I just got through mentioning, all of our healthcare providers here, whether it's Ascension, whether it's McLaren, whether it's Henry Ford, uh, provide those uh, centers for people to come to and get tested. The big concern is, you know what, what do they need to do to get tested? Well, first off, you gotta show symptoms. I mean, that's first and foremost. If you're not showing symptoms, going and getting tested isn't gonna help anything because you may show or have symptoms later. So you get a, you get a test that says, you know what, you're, you're, you're clear, you don't have COVID. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get it the next day. So the symptoms are to make a determination. Is there something else going on with you or do you have COVID? So we know that there's a way that people that might have a healthcare or primary physician that can uh, take that uh, initial assessment, give them a prescription to go get tested, direct them someplace to go. But then there are those that don't have access to a primary health physician, and there are still locations for them, whether it's the Rite Aids that just opened up uh, 21 Mile and Romeo Plank. You can go online and uh, provide, they'll provide you information and tell you to come on down for a test. Uh, My Care over in Centerline on 10 Mile, uh, we partnered with them, our health, our health department did. So people can call that number to kind of get information as to whether or not they can get uh, tested and uh, make a determination. So anybody who needs or wants to get tested, we have the availability of sites, whether it's a healthcare, uh, uh, hospitals, and or some of these other uh, sites that are available for them to get tested. Mark, there are options throughout the entire county, and the other thing is that the demand isn't there yet. We're able to ensure that individuals that do want tests have options here, not only in Macomb County, but around the region, and whatever your care is needed, we'll be able to get you in the right direction. Yeah, so, um, and understand there's two different types of tests that we're talking about. People yeah. are wondering, you know, is there this test to determine whether I had this, and uh, now I can be, you know, I, I'm immunized from it because I've already had it. There's questions about that to begin with. So, the tests we know that are out there that we're trying to get people to take are just the ones to make a determination whether you happen to have COVID and you test positive at the time you took the test. 
The other one is something they're ramping up on, and again, there's not a lot of availability at all on this, and they're still testing, is to find out whether or not you have the, I guess, uh, uh, the immunity towards something like this, and they're trying to determine that. So a lot of people are going to be very interested in that test, even when it comes out, so they can decide whether or not they even have to take some kind of a, you know, uh, some kind of a shot to make uh, them immune to this into the future. We're still trying to work out all those details at the federal level to decide whether or not there's something available. Here. Mark, you bring up an interesting point because at the onset of this and it started to spread throughout the country, it was the whole notion of testing to understand those individuals that has the virus and the spread of the disease. Now it's how can we use testing as we look at opening things back up, whether it's businesses, whether it's the way that we interact with the public and provide services in Macomb County. There's a number of efforts and conversations on that front, whether it's what we discussed last week with the gating type options that the feds are getting out there with the CDC recommendations, obviously the governor, her emergency health orders. Some of the Republican caucus members are looking at a comeback roadmap and everything, but it's all the convergence of data information and testing so we can see when's the most appropriate time to bring folks back in the safest environment possible. Yeah, and you hope that this doesn't get to, you know, the, the animosities and tensions that are coming to play because people are having that uh, that pent-up frustration right now. You know, when are we going to open up? When we come back to normalcy? You got political uh, anxiety that comes into play, especially during election season. So, you know, what we don't need is for people to politicize this particular issue and try to figure out how do we start moving in a, in a path to allow some of these, uh, I guess, uh, non-essentials to, to come back into you know, the, the working mode here, uh, whether it's people that cut hair or people that uh, you know, are washing cars or even the landscaping companies. How do we start getting back to that, but in a progressive approach, making sure that we're starting to see a decline in the number of people that are testing positive from this? And then if we start opening it up, making sure there's a way of kind of pulling back if we're starting to relapse. In other words, you start to see a climb again. So, there's going to be this contentious, uh, I guess, uh, back and forth, and an un unfortunately for the governor, a difficult uh, decision-making process, but uh, you always got to err on the side of uh, health and, uh, and, and human life. Mark, I think we stand in a really good place here in Macomb County because we really have had a data-driven response. Working with our health department, getting the intel from our health care providers, finding needs on everything from PPE to the needs of individuals out there, whether it's food security or caring for seniors. This is something where we've been analyzing the community day in, day out through our emergency operations center, working with everything from our health care providers to our first responders and our police and fire folks to really understand where the needs in the community and how can we get those resources there. And as you mentioned earlier, you were talking about that phased-in approach and even talking about what we're doing here within the, the state and uh, they're already talking about from the legislative perspective you know how do you isolate Wayne Oakland Macomb because there seems to be more cases uh, predominantly that's the area that was hit hardest and start to open up the rest of the state uh, it's under understandable you know there's still people saying hey you know in our county's way up in the north part of the state we want to get back to some sense of normalcy sooner than later so I get that I mean there's going to be this uh, trade office to saying you know how do we start moving in that direction, even though we know uh, there's, this, there's incredible challenges uh, in Southeast Michigan right now? So that back and forth is going to create a lot of attention, uh, getting a lot of attention and create a lot of attention with people as they try to debate this up in Lansing as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to have to start, you know, realizing this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Uh, the frustrations are going to be there, but, uh, you know, let's not let it get the best of us. Uh, we still need to figure out how do we stay united and not let this become some kind of a political, political uh, fight between, uh, I guess, political parties. Yeah, Mark, as we sit here on April 20th, looking at the current executive order that's in place by the governor going out to May the 1st, the other thing that's also critical too is that folks continue to find those outlets. Whether it's checking in using some of those digital connection resources, whether you're Zooming with your family and friends, whether you're doing an alternative lesson plan through one of the school districts, whether you're getting out there and taking a walk on a trail or going to a park just for some fresh air, those things are going to be absolutely critical and are all throughout the county. And again, if you go through MacombGov.org, you can get connections to all those resources and what's out there. Yeah, and I think rude awakening for the kids. Uh, they come to find out that there are lesson plans now that they have <laughs> to uh, tie into. You know, I guess uh, some of the kids are doing some of the online stuff, and mm -hmm. it's interesting. They got to do the Zoom with some of their teachers in the high school. It's kind of fun to watch. And then the, the lesson plans that kids now have to go online for. So, a different way of uh, educating, uh, but we're fortunate. Our educational institutions here in Macomb County have stepped up. They're ready, they're prepared. In fact, they're uh, putting those lesson plans for the kids, and they're doing their homework right now. I think they all thought they were going to get away with one mm -hmm. and not have to do any homework, but they're finding themselves having to do it. The unfortunate part is as parents, uh, you tend to see that we're doing a lot of that at home teaching ourselves and kind of uh, you know working with our kids with some of those problems. But no question about it, it's definitely been uh, an opportunity to bring families together 
And uh, I got to just say it, when it comes to pets, even though our animal control is still open and operational, a lot less problems with animal control having to respond to things. And I think a lot more animals uh, or pets are getting a lot of attention right now that, uh, that I think they're enjoying. So at least I know mine is. Mm -hmm. Lucy's loving it back at home. So again, this is going to be something that's going to be long and drawn out. Uh, it's not going to change overnight. Uh, we just want to give you some quick updates what's going on here. So again, we continue to appreciate the patience on behalf of the public and uh, remind everyone uh, to go to macombgov.org for more information. And in the meantime, keep yourself and your family safe.